Back when I was doing my PhD, which is many, many years ago now, we had to write progress reports at the end of the first and second year. And I remember one student in our research group taking months to write his report. And I later heard that he'd written close to 300 pages because he'd tried to include every single experiment that he'd done. Now, eventually, his supervisor told him to stop, but he'd made two really common mistakes. The first mistake is that he assumed that he had to show how much work he'd done, which is something that I see all the time in literature reviews, for example, where people try to show how many papers they've read. And the second mistake he made was that he'd assumed that the longer he made the report, the stronger it would be. Now, these assumptions are common because unlike an undergraduate degree where you have a clear syllabus and you know what you have to do in order to pass, in a PhD, you have to decide what you include. And if you don't know what the examiner wants to see, the temptation could well be to cover as much ground as possible. And because of this, Many university departments impose a maximum word count limit, specifically to stop students from submitting reports or theses of half a million words or more. But there are some people who say that if you have a word count limit, then you should use all of it. And there are those who say that they judge a thesis first and foremost on its length, and that they think a shorter thesis is weaker. But the logic of this falls apart pretty quickly if we think about it. So a PhD thesis should be judged on the quality of the research and writing, and it only needs to be long enough to communicate what you've done and what you've discovered, and to explain the relevant context. And in my experience, the stronger the research and the more confident the writer, the shorter the writing tends to be. And although there are some exceptions, the longest theses tend to be the weakest. They tend to be repetitive. They tend to be filled with irrelevant information that goes nowhere and contributes very little to the argument. And in many cases, the writing will also be overcomplicated to try unsuccessfully to hide a lack of confidence in the research. Or the thesis will become bloated and unreadable because they've followed the kind of standard writing advice of putting everything on the page before editing. So they've never really learned how to edit or make decisions. And what this does is it puts the burden on the reader to try to figure out what's relevant with the strongest material and the most important points often being drowned out by all the rest. And then the examiner's attention is easily drawn to the areas where you're weakest, which just invites difficult questions in your thesis defense. So if you really want to show expertise, it's not about showing how much you know. It's about having the insight to cut through all the noise and show what's important. And the skill then as a writer is to be able to use words efficiently, getting your point across clearly and concisely. Now, I am not saying that you should make everything as short and concise as possible. There are times when a longer sentence is better, and there are times when you should say more in order to include some nuance. And of course, there are times when you can choose to go into more detail or give more examples to support a particular point. And the reader will appreciate the extra depth, but only if it's well-written and only if you have something interesting to say. To add more just for the sake of padding out the thesis 
or um, to show how many sources you've read is a waste of both their time and yours. So what I generally advise is to vary the amount of detail you give around different areas or points that you cover, saying more about the things that you're more confident in and the things that are most important. And then you can say less about some of the things that you mention just for context, but which aren't crucial. And you can say less about some of the things that have been covered in great depth many, many times before, using references in those cases to refer the reader to some of those sources. And then there are other things that you can just leave out completely. So it's not a binary choice between great detail and concision, and the skill lies in being able to do both and having the confidence to make those decisions. Now, one of the ways to help make these decisions is to try to focus on the essentials. So instead of thinking about showing everything that you know, think about what you would do if you only had, say, 5,000 words to explain your work. What would be the key points that you would absolutely have to include? Then you can think about what you can add to support those points and link them together, leading the reader from one point to the next. So returning to the question of whether a longer thesis is better, of course, there are some differences between different fields and a PhD thesis in the humanities will most likely be longer than a thesis in theoretical physics. But within the normal range for your particular field of research, longer does not necessarily mean better, and often the opposite is true. So it makes absolutely no sense to say that you have to make it as long as you can. And saying that you should use 100% of the word limit is essentially saying that every thesis within a department should be exactly the same length. And that's just not PhD level thinking. So focus on the quality of your research and the writing, not the quantity of words. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and also share the link with someone you think would appreciate it. And if you really like this video and want more of this kind of content, you can now support this channel through Patreon, where I'll be doing live sessions to go into some of these topics in more detail. And the idea of the Patreon is partly to support this channel and allow me to make more of these videos, but also to build a community where we can have a bit more interaction. So check out the link in the description for more details. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you next time.